Live from the Sky News Center, this is Sky World News. Welcome to Sky World News. The US State Department has urged President Mugabe to implement Zimbabwe's power sharing deal in full if he wants better relations with Washington. Mr Mugabe has said he's seeking a new era of cooperation with Western nations. Eight months into Zimbabwe's coalition government, Prime Minister Morgan Changarai has told Sky News he's frustrated at the slow pace of change. He accused some members of the old regime of blocking progress, but says he believes President Mugabe wants to make the deal work. He's been talking to our Africa correspondent Emma Hurd in the first of a series of reports from Zimbabwe. Is Zimbabwe's future looking brighter? And is it time for the West to give more support? Let's hear your views and send your comments to that address on your screen. Email us at news at sky.com. And there's much more from Emma Heard on her visit to Zimbabwe on our website. The former head of the British Army has been forced to clarify his position after he suggested Gordon Brown had ignored his request for more troops in Afghanistan. Downing Street issued a strong denial before General Sir Richard Dannett said he believes extra troops will eventually be deployed. Our chief correspondent Stuart Ramsey reports. Wedding photos are meant to be a snapshot of a bride and groom's big day, bringing back misty-eyed memories. Instead, when Sylvia Day's new album arrived, she cried tears of anger. And the video was no better with a soundtrack of swearing during the service. So she sued the photographer, as Sky's Simon Viger reports. You're watching Sky News. The Shadow Chancellor, George Osborne, has outlined some of his proposals to reduce the nation's debt. He said that under a Conservative government, the retirement age would increase sooner than planned. He vowed to cut some benefits and promised to freeze the pay for millions of public sector workers. Sky's Joey Jones reports on Mr Osborne's bitter pill. And the papers are here. Let's take a look, shall we? Uh, starting with the Daily Express. Scary headline there, killer bug in most chickens. Their lead story says more than three quarters of British chicken is contaminated with a potentially lethal food poisoning bug. That's in a report revealed yesterday, according to the Express. Tests on birds for sale in shops across the country showed that 76.1% of whole British reared chickens harbour the Campobacter belacter bug, which kills 80 people a year and makes a further 440,000 ill. That's on the Express. Independent, the great energy rip-off is what they lead on. Fuel bills have become a scandal as the biggest suppliers in the £25 billion a year industry make vast profits supplying gas and electricity to Britain's 20 million families, according to independent experts. And uh, The Guardian has a picture of the Booker Prize winner on its front page. That's it for now. I've, of course, got more on the way. Live from the Sky News Centre, this is Sky World News. This is Sky World News and these are the top stories. Zimbabwe's Prime Minister Morgan Changarai has told Sky News he's frustrated at the slow pace of change. We've been asking for your emails on all the top stories here on Sky World News. Jay Creswell from South Africa wrote in about the war in Afghanistan. Why do the generals persist in allowing soldiers to do foot patrols in such a dangerous area? Surely another alternative could be used. Enough British soldiers have died needlessly in this activity. This is something that the generals could change now without long discussions about the pros and cons. Lancelot Stilwell, also from South Africa, had this to say on the same subject. Of course, there should be a public debate about differences of opinion between the army and the politicians. Has nobody learnt the lessons of the past? This is not 1914. The public will no longer accept the mindless slaughter of young men. And Dallas Nash from Gaborone in Botswana messaged us on the Conservative plan to raise the pension age. I'm no economist, but surely if it will help the economic recovery to raise the pensionable age by a year, why wait till 2016? What's wrong with ASAP? Or is that just too obvious for a politician?
American chat show host David Letterman has continued his primetime acts of contrition over his string of sexual affairs. After his on-air apology last week, this time he said sorry to his wife, saying she's been horribly hurt by his actions. Sky's US correspondent Greg Milam has the story. Live from the Sky News Center, this is Sky News. Good morning, you're watching Sky News. There's fury among senior conservatives after the Chancellor broke a long-held tradition of not making major policy announcements during a rival party's conference. Alistair Darling has ordered a pay freeze on the public sector's highest earners, including judges, GPs and senior NHS managers, but not the armed forces. The announcement is threatening to detract from the shadow Chancellor's speech later today, in which he is expected to announce his big plan to reduce Britain's debt. If the Tories win the election, men would retire at the age of 66 in seven years' time, ten years earlier than planned. Sky's Joey Jones has the story. Live from the Sky News Centre, this is Sky News. Good morning. You're watching Sky News. It's Sunday the 17th of January. Officials have admitted the humanitarian effort in Haiti has reached a critical phase. Four days after the earthquake shattered the country, thousands of people are still scrambling for food and water despite the massive airlift of supplies. The US military who are coordinating the rescue effort say they're still struggling to clear the logjam of life-saving aid still stuck at the airport in the capital Port-au-Prince. Some breaking news coming in here to Sky News. The UN Security Council are going to meet on Monday to talk about the crisis in Haiti. They're going to meet in Mexico. Time now for the sport with Chris Scudder. And the morning's papers are here. Let's have a look at the headlines that are here on the Express. A story that we've uh, been talking about. Scrap jail sentences, say prison governors. They want more community services. Uh, jail terms of less than a year should be abolished in favour of softer community sentences, says the Express. Prison bosses will urge today. Such a move would allow many burglars, thieves, drug abusers and violent offenders to escape custodial sentences. That's on the front page of the Express today. Uh, the Guardian leads on the story that the Tories are to raise the retirement age to cut deficit with a picture of the two girls who jumped off of the Erskine uh, Bridge near Glasgow. And uh, the Daily Mail, a picture of Tony and Cherie, but a story that has nothing to do with them there on the front page, gets set to retire at 66. The Tories will raise the retirement age to 66 if they win power to pay for Gordon Brown's spending spree and plug the black hole in Britain's finances. Shadow Chancellor George Osborne will today unveil plans to make people work longer from 2016. And of course, I'll be back with all the top stories in just a moment.